Would you like to see Bobby and I remove some bad bolts today? Check it out on this episode of How Not to Highline. Hi, I'm Ryan Jinx and this is Bobby Hutton. And Bobby has been changing bolts here at Sugarloaf, bolts that have been donated by the ASCA. From Greg Barnes sent him some bolts that look like this. They are 2.75 inches by half inch stainless steel power bolts with a camouflage hanger. And we're adding a quick link so we can add some chain so we can have a welded fix PLX wrap ring on there as you can see right there. Now we're going to show you the process of removing bolts. This is something I've been looking forward to a long time learning how to do because when I tried to do it a couple years ago it was a super pain in the ass. So Bobby's got some tricks he's going to show us and we're going to rebolt these anchors up here that are not super good enough as you can see. This is called rebolting, right? Rebolting. Retro bolting is when you basically decide to add bolts to a route that you didn't establish. And that's very frowned upon apparently. Bobby's goal here to reuse every hole that he can. Um, if you cannot reuse a hole for whatever reason, you, what do you do? You drill a hole right next to it? Uh, yeah, close to it. Close to it, wherever it makes sense. Without too close to the original hole that would compromise the bolt strength. What kind of bolts are these that we're replacing? Uh, these are, uh, 516 split shafts. Okay. We'll take a look at them when we pull them out. The trick with replacing bolts is that's what you would have clipped to. So Bobby is attached to what we would call a rope swing if <laughs> <laughs> he intended on using it. But it is better to be clipped in than not be clipped in. And uh, since we do intend to go down this route and replace some more bolts, it is important to have your helmet. So what's the first step, Bobby? So the first step would be to uh, loosen this hanger up. It's already loosened, um, but I would use a tool like this. Um, a lot of people use a really, really thin piton. Uh, the trick is to just get it underneath the edge and then tap it in there to get the bolt um, started coming out so you can get your tuning fork underneath there and finish the process. And what's the tuning fork? So this is a, a piton, uh, is this a lost arrow piton? Okay. That I... has been machined, a groove has been machined in the middle of it. This one was machined for the ASCA and they um, used to send these out um, to their rebolters. Awesome. How's the rebolting process work for the AS ASCA? Do you just submit that you're trying to do this project out here and they go, good job, Bobby, and send you bolts? Or do you have to like show them you know what you're doing? Um, both. Both. <laughs> <laughs> you've replaced a lot of bolts and you've done a lot of CRG with your own dollar, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I reached out to Greg and, and kind of shared with what I had done so far and we had a conversation and then he sent me some bolts. Cool. Yeah, Bobby's done a lot of... Uh, bad bolt replacements in uh, the CRG, Consumers River Gorge area in Placerville here in California. How many bolts did he give you in this case? Uh, 50. Nice. That's really helpful when uh, you get help. So if you want to, the ASCA is um, donor based. So if you want to donate some money, this is basically where it goes. Bobby does all this because he loves doing it. <laughs> Nobody gets really paid to do this stuff. It's just to make our anchor safer. All right, what's the first thing All we're right. gonna do in this case? So this hanger is a little bit loose already. So we're just going to start with the tapping. Tapping. What kind of bolt is this? This is a split shaft bolt. Okay. We tested some uh, quarter inch? Yeah, quarter No, three inch. eighths. Three eighths. We yeah. tested some three eighths split shaft on bolt busters, but those were new and we're not quite sure this would be as strong. Just try not to get my phone hit. 
<laughs> nice. It's nice to have different sizes. Is this basically is? You just wedge the shit out of it? Yep. Oh. That sounds like a lot of work. Sure is. So you can see that Bobby has made some progress. I guess you don't want to ever um, start this unless you're willing to finish it. Yep. That is, uh, that is a concern, right? Yep. You really want to have your system dialed. Make sure you know how to do this. Um... Maybe practice with some some new bolts in a rock in your backyard. Yeah. Uh, before you go out and get started on something that you might not necessarily be able to finish. So occasionally your tuning fork um, gets a little bent out of shape. <laughs> and then you do some uh, blacksmithing right here. I feel it. I feel progress. Yeah, what you can do is, I think, once it's high enough, you just stack these, right? Yeah. Okay. It's all the way out now. You can pull it out. So okay. So you should just be able to torque this whole thing out the last little bit. Oh, well, that's not very much holding. <laughs> yeah. So this is a quarter inch uh, tuning fork. So it binds up toward the wool bed and starts to split it out. So you have to, to beat the, the bolt out of your tuning fork. Your friend gets a little exuberant when they're pounding it Oh, it, it was in. so exuberantly fun. <laughs> So we are replacing this with that bolt that looks so much bigger next to this guy. Wow, that is crazy the difference. I know size doesn't always matter, but I feel like this is just a little too stubby. This is a 5 16 hole that we're going to take up to half inch. Does it, like, what's it like drilling a pre-existing hole? Is it like wobble or what? Uh, no. Um, if you're drilling hole diameters that are too close together, um, you might get your bit stuck in okay. the hole. Um, this is a pretty big difference. It'll be easier to drill because there's less material in there until I drill past where the hole is. But it, okay. I don't expect any binding. Okay. I could go, I could use a 3 8 uh, bolt in this hole. Just drill up to 3 8 instead of half inch. Um, but I, the free bolts that I was provided with are half inch and a uh, super bomber that yeah. should be here for well past my lifetime. And then I have my handy compressed air to, to blow the dust away. Oh wow. I gotta get one of those. And then somewhere, not prepped, is a brush for this. So you wanna blow and brush out your hole so there's a solid connection between the granite and the bolt. So, one thing with power bolts is you don't want your hole too shallow because you're not getting it back out very easily, right? Nope. So this is probably going to stay down there. You would stay down there. You'd have to drill a whole new hole and that would suck. So how do you verify this is deep enough? Um, some people have um, different types of measuring sticks. You can use anything that will fit down in there. So okay. we'll measure it there and then we'll compare that to the bolt length that we have. Go the other way, um, keep your fingers there and touch the bottom of the bolt. That's what I've done. 
Yeah, so it might, we might be a little short, so let's... Yeah, let's make um, sure... Yeah, let's drill a little bit more. So I think I made a, a rookie mistake and was looking at how much dust was on the drill, bill, drill bit, <laughs> yeah. um, not taking into account the mound of dust that forms up. Perfect. Oh. Just fine. You check your work. It's not a big deal. Um, yeah, I can't think of too many situations that too long of a hole is a problem. Um, except you're going to waste glue if you're using a glue in. And you're going to waste battery. You waste battery. So it's, it's kind of a waste if you go too much. But you definitely um, don't want to be too short. With glue ins, you're going to know whether or not it's right before you can stick the bolt in. But these mechanical bolts, you cannot just pull out and redo. So let's check that depth again, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> All right. Oh, I like that. Sick. Dink. All right. So uh, to set it up properly to to install, um, you suck the um, wedge cone in um, till it's um, snug, but not starting to expand. So we get it started. Check our work. Yep. And before we tap it down the final bit, we orient the hanger in the direction that it will see a load. And then tap it. <laughs> no. Then you can hold it. All right, nice. so that's pretty snug. Yeah, Box what is that? Inch. Yep. Um, this is a half inch bolt. This uses a 916th box end wrench to tighten it. Yeah, make sure your tools are compatible before coming out here. Yep. Just hiking up here would be uh, it'd be a nice hike for nothing. <laughs> or you wouldn't be able to tighten it, and then you'd have an untightened bolt in the rock until you can return. Uh, that's it. That's it. Got a new bolt. Oh, well, that's all, folks. Let's do an instant replay with this one. How long did that take me? Awesome. Five minutes to replace that bolt. I mean, this would still last a couple more years, but I mean, when do you replace them? You know, after somebody gets hurt, you know, that's not gonna work, so cool. Um, that is how to remove split shafts. So that is how to remove a split shaft bolt. And we're gonna cover some more episodes, probably in this area about how to remove uh, other types of bolts and how to remove stuff and replace things in the vertical setting, which that requires pretty much everything to be clipped in. So we're gonna have other videos just like this. Let me know in the comments below if you like these videos on examples on how to remove stuff. Make sure you check out our bolting Bible. It's on slackademics.com. Eventually it will be on hownottohighline.com. And we're rewriting the whole thing for a 2020 version, adding all sorts of stuff, including the New Testament to the bolting Bible, which is how to remove bolts. So check that out. If you want to learn more about this process, we're gonna have lists on tools that you would need in order to do this process. But it is nice for you to be able to see, kind of start to finish what it takes to 
actually remove the bolts. If you want to support projects like this, you can donate to the ASCA, the American Safe Climbing Association, and they help give people like Bobby a bunch of bolts so they can uh, make the areas safer that we climb in. And if you want to help support this channel, Patreon or PayPal.com is a great way to donate some money. And make sure you follow, like, and subscribe to How Not to Highline because we are posting stuff every week about brake tests, Mythbuster style experiments, and tutorials. Cheers.